All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to show you a super fast method of creating trim sheets for mockups so you can play around with them and kind of fill out what you might want to do when it comes to your environments and design them and all kinds of other fun stuff. So let's go ahead and just get started. We're going to delete the default cube. Now, keep in mind, this tutorial is not for necessarily beginners. I expect you know how to create things, add them, delete them, edit geometry, all that kind of fun stuff. So um, we're going to go ahead and just get straight into it by creating a default plane here. So just create that regular plane. Now I'm going to create a uh, cube on top of it. And let's go ahead and start editing this. All right. So I'm going to snap it on up here and move it down. So holding control while moving, you can snap incrementally. Something like so. That's all I need for now. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the bottom view here. Press Alt Z, I can select all the way through, and now I can just delete those sections. So we have this going on. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and hold Control and Shift and snap it like so. And I'm just going to be creating a real basic one here. That way, um, this tutorial doesn't last forever, but I'm going to duplicate it again, place it like so, and then pull this one back. So. You can model this however you want, but just keep in mind it needs to be high fidelity because it will turn into a normal map. And normal maps pick up everything, so you need to shade them smooth and you need to make sure you have a, enough geometry that it's going to look uh, proper. Okay. And so for this one, this is going to be like the middle wall section. This will be like a top wall section and this will be another wall section. Just pay attention that you don't have vertical up and down uh, too much because what's going to end up happening is if we go into uh, mat cap here, and click on the normal mat cap and we view it from above so hit alt while orbiting you'll see that there's no normal being generated right now it's all just like a flat normal so uh, you do want to take time and pull things out a little bit and kind of taper them if you would right so what this is going to allow to happen now is it'll look like this okay also, you don't have to subdivide these, but I do personally. I think it it's, uh, provides for a better result. And if you subdivide, you'll end up with this number going on. If you were to just, say, do a loop cut and slam it to the side, sometimes this may or may not work out well for you. So if I right-click Shade It Smooth, you'll see in this case it's not too bad. But sometimes you'll have that normal get messed up right on the ends, and it won't allow it to be a repeating pattern as, as well as it could be. Okay. I'm going to do this though right now because it's just fast. Okay. Bevel these corners here. Mouse wheel up. You'll see when I beveled it on this edge because we do in fact have a hidden edge over there right now. Um, created these little triangles here. So we don't need things like that. Oftentimes I would turn, I wouldn't do those loops until the very end if possible. Right. Because now everything is kind of geeked up. And uh, not working too well. All right. So fortunately, we can get past that just by doing a couple deletes real quick. Okay. All right. Now, same for the top up here. I'm going to just bevel this one. A lot. Make it a little bit round. And subdivide it. Middle wall section, you can break this up however you want. I'm just going to do an offset, something like this. Grab this one, this one, bevel it, something simple. Okay, and I'm going to press E, extrude faces along normals, and bring them on down. Okay, and you would think that would be fine, but it's not because it's flat when it comes to the normal. There's nothing, there's no information there. Fortunately, this one, we'll go ahead and just delete the ends here. You should be able to apply a bevel modifier. And we should be able to bump up the segment amounts and get a pretty decent result here. Okay. Not gonna be perfect though. So we can shade that smooth. Do pay attention to your shading. If it shades the wrong way, it won't make a good normal map that repeats left to right. And so you need to pay attention to that, okay? Play around with doing auto smooth or even doing weighted normals but it needs to match up. So sometimes you might have to just duplicate out a section, place it next to itself, and just kind of see what's going on. You may get this dark little line here. This is going to be under 
uh, your shading properties here just um, outline if it goes away and it looks pretty decent then you're probably okay sometimes you might have little artifacts like this this isn't going to be such a big deal because it's just a mock-up but just keep in mind uh, if you're doing a finished piece you'll want to go through Photoshop and actually patch up all those little areas by doing offsets and uh, clone stamp and all the kinds of fun stuff like that also keep in mind take a look here if you don't have a face next to it you might have some light bleeding into the crevices and stuff so you do actually have to place these with sections on each end including the top and in the corners uh, you don't have to necessarily use the whole piece over but you need to at least cut it and have a section for here and then use this section on the other side so it'll save you a little bit if you have a lot of polygons and stuff going on all right you can see this top one's not looking too well let's shade it smooth there we go do a couple cuts like that on the top one this bottom one we'll just do two okay and we're going to keep this simple for this video so this little section i'll do an inset all right you can see inset faces thickness right here i always copy that just in case but if i select the next section by hitting alt and clicking on the edge i can just hit shift r sometimes i might need to make a different selection though using control and that's going to use the shortest path as a um, as an operation so therefore you can't do shift r you have to actually copy and paste uh, that value each time you do it over and over so in this case we should be okay though so i'm gonna make this one a little bit thicker I'm doing a big inset here like that okay so now i should be able to do shift r shift r there we go let's go ahead and grab these areas here i just want to grab all the way through hold control shift control shift control okay a lot back and forth there all e extrude faces along normals Offset it even. Control R, Control R, Control R. Alt and Shift, select them. Control B, bevel it. Just like so. Um, you can do a loop cut here if you want. You see how fast we can get proper topology doing things like this, right? Okay. Some people may argue that's not proper. And they could be correct because there's no uh, support loop going around it, so. But if you were to, uh, I heard someone call it sidewalk on a YouTube video that I has, and they call it sidewalks. Create sidewalks around it. That works, right? Um, there's another option. Let me show you another one. Select that loop in the middle, press I, and then O to do an outset instead of an inset. And now you have sidewalks, just like that, right? And that's proper. So... And oh, I can get it to work. <laughs> Apparently, I can't get it to work. Oh, I selected the edge. That's why. There we go. Sidewalk. Do it again. Boom. All right. So this is looking pretty good. These are a little flat though. There's not much going on there. So um, there's a couple different things you could probably do get that to work better I think I want to do a taper um, but in all honesty it's, it's going to be a little bit too long to set that up so let's just do a shear I'm selecting these vertex or the vertices all the way through I'm just going to shear them out a little like this I just kind of eyeball it for now you would want to probably rip one of these sections out model it mirror it and then um, place it back where it needs to go and then have three copies of it on an array or something like that if you wanted to do it real real proper but you can see now we got much more of the face exposed and it looks much nicer right not perfect though but it's good enough for this tutorial same thing can be done up here except these ones uh, what I'm gonna do is actually we already have that kind of inset going there it's not something I want so these bottom ones here I'm going to go ahead and delete them all the way through. And then uh, this section here and this section here, I go ahead and press E and Z and just snap them down. Something like so. Okay, that's going to allow me to avoid an error. So I could come in here, I could do Alt E, extrude faces along normals, push them in. All right, do my loop cuts. 
Press Control B, bevel them out like so. I'm going to isolate forward slash. Take a look at it here real quick. Turn subdivision off in edit mode. Make sure this is being done right. And as you can tell right here, these probably aren't needed. And so I can select all those bottom faces there and just delete them. All right. And now we're in business. Let's go ahead and do a loop cut in each of these again. Select all the way through, bevel. Okay. Let's do a inset, not an outset, an inset. Okay. I'm just going to keep these as squares, but if you wanted to round the corners, you could. And so that's what I'm doing right now. There we go. I can do a loop cut down the middle, bevel it as well. Okay. I'll have a little bit of a soft corner. Bump that subdivision up a little bit. You can see, if you can see the uh, issues, then it will be apparent in your normal maps. So keep that in mind. Take a look at it out of isolation there. Um, I like it for the most part, except I don't think, I don't think, uh, I want it that big. I think I want to make it a little bit smaller. Just do something like this. So it's not covering up this section here. This section, surprisingly, I have these little faces down here. I don't like those. I think they're causing a little bit of a problem, so I'm going to delete them. Okay, and that's looking pretty good to me. not too bad so you can spend forever in a day making other little elements to place in here just keep in mind you don't want to overdo it this is all going to turn basically flat at the end of the day and so you don't want to you don't want to do it too extreme unless you're going to use like displacement maps to do renders or tessellation or something like that so if you're going to actually build this as an asset and put it into like unreal 5 or something then yeah, of course you might want to spend extra time on it getting everything just perfect and right. But for me right now, this is okay. Okay, so press N, we're gonna bring out uh, GrabDoc here. GrabDoc, once you install it, um, you just hit the little icon here or the little tab and then set up scene, boom, done. Right there, nothing else going on, okay? One thing I do want to mention and point out is I did create this plane underneath here. And I'm going to move it to the side because I will use it eventually. I want to point something out. If um, we go to leave cam on exit, what's going to happen is we can do a normals preview. It's going to give us basically the same thing. It's going to ask, okay. And so we can see this going on. All right, what's cool about grab dock is that it's up here it says visible. You can actually turn that off. And now watch, watch what happens if we do a normal preview. Oh, it's all black right in there. Okay, this is good because you can actually make transparent normals, so you can do like decals and things like that as well. So keep that in mind. Just wanted to show it to you real quick. And so if I press Escape, I can get out of that. And we're not going to do uh, transparent here. We're going to make it visible, very visible. But everything in the background will have its own color map. We do have to set up a color map at this point because we're going to be taking it over to Substance Painter. However, you can add textures and materials here in Blender. And GrabDoc also has the ability to export albedos, roughness, and metalness maps as well. But we're going to be doing a mat ID, height, um, occlusion, curvature, and normals. You could also do alpha if needed, but um, it's not, not much use to that. So, uh, yeah, so that's it. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it. If we go back to a standard mat cap here, we'll do glossy again. We'll see that none of this has uh, material ID to it yet. We need to assign materials. Actually, if we do mat ID preview right now, take a look at this. It actually assigns a random material ID if you want it to. You can see it's set ID method to random. We're using material, but you could use object and vertex color as well. So if we go to material, you'll see um, it's, it's not set up, but you can auto ID the full scene, okay? And it'll do a number like so, all right? Leave the preview there. And this is cool, but that might be something that you want to separate from one another. And so auto ID just goes based off of objects, right? 
You can see G, GD, random, ID, etc., etc., right? Now the trick here is that if we go under viewport display, you'll notice that it changed the viewport display color. This is the one it actually cares about. It doesn't really matter that there's a base color, to be honest. So just keep that in mind. And this object, I'm going to go ahead and jump into edit mode. I'm going to create another material. Click new. I want to separate out another one, so I'm going to use red. Okay, so this is my new material. Here, it's red. Okay, you can't tell it's red. We can change the base color as well. So eventually it'll pop up in there. There it goes. And um, so let's say this little section here, right, on all of these. Let's make this a different material than the uh, kind of like the frame going around it. I'm going to use select more, which I have hot mapped to uh, my mouse here. So select more right there. Okay. And um, assign. So now we have a separation of those two materials. Let's do that one on this one real quick as well. I say it's a good idea to use different colors, not the same colors over and over. So select more, create a new material. I don't even care about the name. I just want to get a different material going. Let's do blue. I'll go ahead and make this blue as well, just so we can see the color here. Okay, we can assign it, boom, just like that. So you can see how fast this is. It's not really that slow at all. Modeling and everything included, you know, spend more time modeling if you want, but for a trim sheet, you want to keep it kind of standard and basic, to be honest, because a lot of like newer games, the, uh, the workflow is decals on top of the trim sheet. So you can add all kinds of little buttons and panels and, and all kinds of text and stuff on. So the the more simple you keep it probably the better off you'll be all right and then you can do like an atlas for floors and trim sheets for floors and etc cetera, etc cetera. so detailed trim sheets and so you can start making a lot of different things but uh this is good for now for our purposes if you were like i said if you were using um you were going to do this all in blender you would just instead of doing a color id map you don't have to you can just start applying materials and you can start baking it out at this point. However, we're going to Substance Painter. So there's something we do need when we go over to Substance Painter, and that's a plane. So we need to um, file, export, FBX, and we're going to do selected objects, select the, pan the plane, and then go ahead and uh, export it out like so. And just to prove a point, I'll export this one. All right, this here, we can now actually bake this out. So we need to set up the baking settings. And so the export path's red. There's nothing set up. We're going to go to desktop, do a new folder. We call this uh, Atlas Tutorial. Okay. Oops, sorry, Atlas Trim Sheet Tutorial. <laughs> what am I doing here? Let's name this right. Boom. It's not an Atlas. You can do half Trim Sheet, half Atlas. So you don't have to fill this whole area with a Trim Sheet. You could do like detailed objects down here if you wanted to. Okay, turn the compression down. We're going to name this Trim Sheet Tutorial. So 2048, we're just going to leave it as is, PNG 16-bit. It's a good idea to use 16 for the normal maps, okay? And uh, everything's checked already, so we're pretty much good to go. The only one we're not really going to need is, I believe, the Height Preview. We probably won't need that one, okay? So, oh, you can see export plane as FPX right there. That's cool. All right. I never even noticed that before. So I went ahead and exported it all out, and we're going to take it into Substance Painter, and we're going to add some materials to it, so it'll end up looking something like this, right? So I'm going to click New. Here's the trick. We want to use PBR Metallic Roughness, okay? 1024. We could do 2048. We're going to use OpenGL. Um, however, if you're doing a DirectX game, such as like Unreal Engine, you use DirectX. Also, uh, Unreal Engine uses Compute Tangent Space per fragment. We're not doing Unreal. We're doing Blender. So we're just going to leave it as is in OpenGL. It should work out just fine. Use UV tile workflow. Okay. You can import cameras and stuff if you want. Uh, import mesh maps and baked maps. So you do want to import these. So this is all that we baked out from Blender. We can select it, open it. We need to select the plane, okay? That's important. That's what we're going to work on. 
and we can click uh, OK at this point. It should work out just fine. We're going to discard that one. That one was pretty rough, but nonetheless, we got it here. Let's go ahead and open up Texture Set Settings. This is usually a tab with layers, but uh, this little panel here, this is what we need. Select Normal Map, select this. We'll go up to Project over here, and we'll go ahead and start adding these. So here's the Normal Map. Select Normal Map. Boom. All right. This is the color ID, so let's set ID map. There we go. Trim sheet for um, this is curvature. Set it there. And then the ambient occlusion. Okay. Now we don't have position map, thickness map, or world space map. Unfortunately, um, you know, you could take this into substance and bake it a high poly to a, a low poly plane or whatever the case. But we're just going to work with it like this for now. It's a rough mock up. It's super fast and efficient, but we're not spending a whole lot of time on it, right? So we don't need every bit of fidelity that we can get out of it right now. And so let's go ahead and go to uh, materials. You can see here, if we grab a material, click and drag, we can hold control at the same time after clicking and dragging. And we can place this wherever we want. So if we wanted um, this to be aluminum, it'll turn into aluminum like so. Uh, also, keep in mind the background here that we didn't assign a color ID map to, it is still there, okay? So if I did carbon fiber there, let's do it. You can see that it's actually white still, so um, we have things like that going on as well. Can do a um, silicone coat, something like that maybe. And then let's do plastic matte here. I'm going to change this to a different color, like an off-white. Okay. Not that bright, though. Let's keep it a little darker. And let's do... Um, you can also use smart ones or smart materials. Sometimes they won't work because we don't have all the information we need, but we could do, like, steel painted right here you'll see it's loading it up now and um, it's taking a little while I guess it's slower because I'm recording but um, steel painted looking like so okay I probably need it inverted though so we can always do that open up the folder here go down we can find like the base aluminum or, or whatever the case may be Metal right here, fill. Illusion dirt, you can modify it as needed. There's paint, there we go. That's the one I wanted. Shiny paint, right, uh, no. We're gonna do, let's do just like a darker color there, okay. Now, which one is inverting it? That's the question. A lot of stuff in here. Worn paint right here might be the invert that I need. Nope. All right, we're not going to sweat that too much. We'll just keep moving on here. All right, another thing I like to do is just use a basic uh, material of some sort. It could be concrete. Uh, it could be rust. It, there's one of them. We can go ahead and throw that on top there. You can see we have a concrete now. And what I like to do is use a smart mask and do a dust, something like a dust surface, and just kind of see what it does. You can see it adds a little bit of texture in there. And I'll probably just uh, bump that down. I don't want it that, that pronounced. It's kind of creating these little squares I don't like. Meh. So we could do, let's try something else. Let's just do surface worn and see what happens. Okay, that's a little bit nicer. Creates a little bit of a lightness here. All right, it would be nice to have a world space uh, normal so we could do like dust only on the top halves of things, but we, we don't have that right now, so. Um, Let's move to, let's do, 
Let's do steel painted. Let's see what happens here if I do this. I'm usually not a big fan of this one. But let's see what happens if I add a smart mask. Be like occlusion soft. Okay. Might need to bump up to strength here. Or do an invert. Nope. Let's bump up to strength. You can see here, this didn't turn out real well. So for a mock-up, it's not such a big deal. But if you're doing a, a more finalized type of piece, you might want to try to knock something like that out in the normal map. That's pretty strong right there, to be honest. You want to just knock it back a little bit, but not maybe not that much. All right. going to do a little bit more just do coated metal and we'll add paint over the whole thing and then we'll do a smart mask uh, paint wear paint old see how that turns out oh that's interesting right it's like a really beat up look to it maybe I need to flip it though then change the balance a little too much now. Let's let's keep it back in the crevices there. And leave it like that. Maybe soften it a bit. Global blur. Uh, not too soft. Let's change the color. I like that right there. That's pretty interesting. There's a lot more we can do for sure, but we're not going to worry about it. We're going to go ahead and go to Export Textures. Check out the output templates here. PBR Metallic Roughness is what I'm using, except um, normally there's just a normal map right here, right? And so I went ahead and renamed it normal underscore DX, and then I duplicate it, and then I make one normal underscore GL. And so I toss normal GL here, just drag and drop it to normal GL basically. And you'll get this kind of number going on. So you have the two different ones. Um, and then that's all you need to do to modify that because Blender uses OpenGL. And if you're using, like I said, DirectX games, you need DirectX there. But um, we can go ahead and now change the uh, properties up a little bit. We're going to export to our folder, which is the trim sheet tutorial. We'll use that. PBR Metallic Rough, not from cache. Sometimes it switches back to cache, and uh, I need just a regular PBR metallic roughness. Okay, the one we just looked at. I'm going to do based on output template, based on uh, texture set sizes, which is what we had it at, which was 2048. And um, dilation infinite. All of this is pretty much good to go, so we can go ahead and just click export. Voila, we are done with that. Save the settings for now. I'm not going to close this because I might have messed something up and I might need to get back to it real quick. It's a good idea to save it out too. But nonetheless, here we are back in Blender. Let's go ahead and set this up on this. I'm going to click New, go over to the Shading tab. And when I created that new material, basically we have the principal BSDF. Select it, make sure it's highlighted, Control, Shift, and T. If you have Node Wrangler installed, you can go ahead and load those things up real quick. Go to the folder. And you're just going to need, um, I think this is height, yeah. So we just need the uh, color, the metallic, direct XGL, or excuse me, direct XGL, the open GL normal, and then uh, the roughness. And we don't need everything else in here right now. You see it came out with a trim sheet tutorial normal PNG as well. Oh, that's from the simple bank. That's what that's from. I was like sitting there. I was like, why did it export that? All right. And that should be all we need. So let's go ahead and import it. Make sure we got everything. Base, metallic, roughness, normal. Okay. And it's all set up here now. It doesn't look too impressive in just um, material preview. That's just kind of what it does. So keep that in mind. If... Um, we go ahead and jump into, we'll hide everything else. Let's move this to a new collection. We'll call it layout. You can call it whatever you want. And I'm going to hide everything else except that collection. So, And we're going to jump into material preview here. 
or let's go to render preview and I'm going to create a mesh plane this is going to act as our floor real quick create a new material change the base color to dark and jump down the roughness to very low okay I'm going to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees set it up right bring it on up like so okay now this has a dimension to it if we go to item you'll see the dimensions here are two meters by two meters let's apply rotation and scale real quick and oh, yeah, that's correct so press Control a apply rotation and scale two by two meters and maybe I want to do like three by three meters or three by fours or something like that anyways you set it up how you want but the point here being I can now move this around if this I'll put the origin point in the corner there so shift S cursor to select the object set origin to geometry origin to 3d cursor if you're using vanilla blender and I started going kind of fast here but it's a lot to cover and uh, so with that in mind we can start to either model on this or we can make a model and then just use it as the UV map so it's it's one or the other or both or whatever the case may be like you can use it how you want and so for this one we're just going to do a couple cuts kind of the way we originally had it and so we'll do this number pull that out a little bit all right it still doesn't look like much add a light a area light it up off the ground there we go you can start to see it coming to life now because the lighting influences it change the lighting to like a light yellow we'll do another one over here that's like a light blue okay bump it up a bit let's go ahead and turn the environment down a little okay so we can go ahead and duplicate these out Actually, it's a good idea not to duplicate these. It's a good idea to just start getting in the habit of doing instances. So press Alt-D instead of Shift-D. And once you do that, you should be, you should be pretty good to go. Um, and you should have a lot of variation starting to pop up and happen. Okay. In this situation, what I did is I kind of created these um, little areas. I'm going to separate them. You can see when I separate it, the dupl the uh, instances go away, which is kind of kind of strange. But I'm gonna instance them again. I can edit these still. And say in these areas here, uh, we're gonna go ahead and kind of get it started, anyways. We'll see if we can get them right quickly. Now you could have did this in your texture and created an emissive maps, but I'm doing it the cheesy, easy way, which is, uh, so we're gonna slide these one at a time. There is an option to do correct face attributes. So you could just grab this whole section and just move it. And uh, usually that's the way to go, but sometimes you gotta turn face attributes on and off, on and off. Um, in this situation it's actually going to work out pretty well but something like this maybe we'll make them a little thinner there we go i don't want these too big but these little sections i'm going to create a new material for them so you could have created an emissive here but we're going to do emissive strength let's turn it white first and then turn it up and we need to assign them so like that Okay, it doesn't look like it is doing much right now, but if we were to uh, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, that uh, bloom is bright. Uh, let's go to two. Change the uh, value here. Maybe it's just too much. You just select material two. Yeah, too much emission. Emission. There you go. I do want them to be pretty bright, but not not that bright. Okay, and now you can see where this is going. This is a lot easier and simpler to deal with. So I'm going to press P, separate that one once again. It's a good idea to get these right before you start um, instancing them all over the place. But I'm going to go ahead and put that there, that there. Okay, these sections, I'm going to press uh, I to inset. 
and then I again to inset like so. Okay. Something real basic. I can just pull those sections out now. It's a little bit. Gives it a little bit of depth. All right. You could do things like that for this as well. Fade them smooth and also auto smooth them. Like so. Okay. And then once again, you can do that same step down here at the bottom. So you could certainly uh, get it started. Let's go ahead and uh, dissolve that one. Oop. Dissolve, not delete. Let's just put a couple here real quick. There we go. And we'll bevel these ones. We'll do one more loop cut over here. One more loop cut over here. Now we should be able to do sections like that. We should be able to inset these as well, but we'll do it as a group. All right. We're going to inset it pretty heavily. And we're going to push them in just a tiny bit. All right. Now, if you press Shift tilde key and G, you can walk around. It's scaled appropriately. It's something about uh, what you would want. It should be fairly realistic. You can see here this actually got um, cut up, and I didn't mean to cut it there. So that was a uh, mistake. That should not have occurred. All right, you'd have to fix that by just doing cuts and lining things up again or starting over. But for the most part, you get the idea of what's going on here. And all these little sections should be on the same point on the grid. So let's go ahead and move them all back on Y. Or Shift D. Rotate. We're just going to rotate a bunch of them. Oop, I should have pressed. Not Shift D, guys. It's a bad habit I'm in. I need to press Alt D and then rotate. Negative 90 degrees. So now we should be able to move them like so. So now we have the corner area going. If you get this flickering effect, that's just EV trying to catch up. Turn the viewport to 1. Turn viewport um, denoising off as well. That'll help you out a little bit. These are really bright, and you can see they're not showing up anywhere right now. And that's just simply because um, you need to bake out the lighting here with EV. If you were to use cycles on the other hand, though, you can see it does a lot nicer off the bat. So let's go ahead and move this to the corner. Move this to the corner right here or over this way. Okay, so you could add more, do some more lighting. Uh, something real nice to do is to turn on screen space reflection. Start that going. None of the others, I believe, show up in the viewport, but I think maybe they do. Maybe they don't. I don't know. And so now... Now we can see this is working out quite well for us. All right. So excellent little... Uh, kind of quick run at creating something like that and then you can play around with this however you see fit create all kinds of different layouts and scenarios and just to give you an idea I'm gonna go ahead and load up the one I already had and I showed this off in a video prior but you can see you can do trim sheets super fast and just create all kinds of fun stuff right and so now I'll let the textures load up. You can sculpt on things as well. Just keep in mind to um, lock your X and Y values on uh, when you're sculpting, if you're sculpting something. So you create piping and plumbing and all kinds of fun stuff like that. It's whole scenes and environments like stupid fast off just a couple trim sheets, right? And it doesn't take nothing to make these things. So then toss a few decals on top if you have decal machine. Everything can use the trim sheet just about. So even the lights up here, even though you can't really see them that well, um, if I was to isolate it, you'll see that this light fixture is actually using the decal or the uh, the trim sheet.
right? Even though it looks a lot more advanced, but it's not. Okay. So when all is said and done, you can get a variety of environments, get them going and started, and make cool things, even like uh, this little section out here. It's supposed to be just like a planner or something, right? Maybe it's like some kind of weird uh, office or something, or a museum in space. I don't know. And so, all in all, yeah, you can you can lay out some things really fast and super quick make all kinds of stuff that's another trim sheet that i i uh, accidentally overwrote i didn't get to uh accidentally oversave the textures on so i had five of them in here but all right so yeah even though this look you probably didn't even notice this wasn't made for this trim sheet it was made for this one and then because when i exported i accidentally overwrote it i just threw that on there to see what it looks like and so yeah, you get to play with ideas super fast. I mean, it's only been, what, 40 minutes now for this tutorial, so there you go. There you have it. That's how you do it, or how I do it anyways, and you can do it too. Just keep in mind, this is not like a final product type thing. If, if you're going to push all the way to a full-on game environment, um, you probably want to take your time and, and create some proper trim sheets, right? So do take your time creating them. Remember, they're not going to, they're more than likely not going to uh, line up and be seamless. So they're going to have little tiny seams left to right. And if you do run into that situation where they don't have, it's not perfectly seamless from here to, say, here, right? You're going to have to take it into Photoshop and touch it up. Or you're going to need to export out a different kind of mesh that has the ability to uh, reuse the UV over and over. That way you can actually get it all right and set correct and everything so anyways that's for the later tutorial but for now play with this have some fun and i'll check you out in the next video okay take care